Your roses should be starting to burst into growth well and truly by now. Now my rose garden was moved from one side of the garden to the other over winter and the growth has just taken off only a few weeks ago. The transplant process has gone pretty well and that's primarily because we soaked each of the plant's root system after they'd been pulled out of the soil in sea salt. Now sea salt's rich in amino acids and plant hormones. It helps stimulate new root growth and reduce the impact of transplant shock. It's what makes it so good. One of the things about it though is that it's often called a fertiliser. Now it doesn't have any mineral nutrients in it. That's really important when you're transplanting. It means that the plant's roots as they emerge are not going to get burnt by fertiliser. The roses have been through stress and stressed plants tend to be more susceptible to pest and disease infestation. Now this has manifested itself here as aphids which have taken hold of some plants and they are in bigger populations than you'd typically expect this time of year. This is usually about the time that you'll be pulling the chemicals out to go spraying the roses and take control, but I've got a better idea. Now, ladybirds, which build up big populations eventually and start eating all those aphids, well, they're about 10 days slower than the aphid life cycle. So if you can slow the cycle down, you're gonna do very well. Now, the simple way to do that is to get the hose and wash the aphids off the stems. You see, those big fat aphids, those ones that are full of sap, they can't fly back up. If you do that, and you might need to do it twice, but if you do that over about a 10 day period, the life cycle of the ladybirds catches up. And there's big enough populations of ladybirds to control those aphids really well. It's a completely natural solution. Mother nature at her very best. Spraying the foliage with sea salt will help, but the first year is more about redeveloping roots and ensuring the plant has the minerals it needs. With a bit of extra water this summer, they'll experience a massive flower display next spring. Now here's a tip for you if you really do want to have beautiful roses. You start to get some shoots like this emerging from the rootstock, and this is a standard, but you'll also get it with rose bushes as well. You have to do something about it, it's really important. This is the wild rootstock. This rose will overtake all of the other rose, the rose that you want to keep, and just smother it out. So the best way to get rid of it is to actually pull it away from the stem. Don't go cutting it with your secateurs. It's just going to stimulate buds to regrow and you'll end up with a bush down here. What you want to do is pull it away from the base just like this. Now, if you do that, you blind the buds. That means that there'll be no more shoots coming out of that spot. And this means that you'll end up with the very best roses in the street. Now, have you got a gardening success at home that you'd like to show us? Well, simply visit our Facebook site, upload some photos, and you could be in the running to win one of several sea salt gardening packs. And you don't want to miss it. It's going to leave your garden shed looking fantastic, but your garden even better.